God is on the throne on this brisk and beautiful day. And we're so glad you joined us here on Hope Today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Amanda Brocker and Cindy Goldman. Listen, guys, I scraped off my win windows this morning. Uh, that's always a, a not my favorite, uh, you know, thing that says that the winter is coming. But we're glad that you've joined us because, hey, Seasons change and things change in our life, Sydney. They surely do. So if you are our Florida friends or Alabama friends, you're probably like, oh, we don't have to deal with frost and praise God for that. But you know, if you have a garage, it's actually kind of nice too. But anyway, just like Tom says, you know, there is so much change. We're going through the change of the seasons. You know, none of us are immune from unexpected tragedy or loss. And when disruptions do interfere with our lives, what should be our response? Well, coming up on Hope Today, global entrepreneur and best-selling author Michelle McKinney Hammond is with us to talk about when shifts happen. She's going to reveal how divine discontentment can lead to pathways of change. You know, Amanda, none of us are immune from when turbulence and things happen in our lives, but it's always great to have a fresh perspective of what God says in the midst of it. That is so true, Sydney. And here in the Pittsburgh area, y'all, it's going to be 70 tomorrow, so just hang in there. <laughs> I'm telling you, but for real, seasons of change in our lives and I think oftentimes we get so stuck on the repetition of life and sometimes I feel like change happens in our life because God's trying to move us into a different area. I know I've gotten to a place in life where I have actually said thank you to my children, you know, who really put us through a whole lot, made us pray very hard. And, but the wells of love that were developed in those years of that intercession, I wouldn't have that, you know, if it wasn't for it. So it's like amazing how when you can go back and look at those valleys in life and there were good character of God that was developed in those areas. And you can become thankful. Well, I found out about myself, and I was joking with Michelle before the show, that I love my comfort zone. I love, I put pillows in my comfort zone. I put my feet up, you know, I got my big screen TV in my comfort zone. But God, he still moves us on and moves us into new places That's because true. that causes growth. Well, as you know, we've all been praying for Israel. I hope you've continued in prayer for Israel this entire time. Uh, you know, we, there was an Israeli airstrike in Gaza overnight. Listen, man, wars is a horrible thing. It's nasty stuff. And, and we believe that Israel has the right to defend themselves, but we also, our hearts go out to, to innocent Palestinians as well that are suffering the consequences of the horrible things that Hamas did and the retribution from Israel. We just need to continue in prayer, everybody. We need to continue That's in true. prayer for the situation. Yes. Tell you what, I'm gonna ask you, Amanda, if you don't mind, if you would please pray and, and bring Israel before the Lord today. Yes. And we want to ask you to join us. You know, it's one thing for us to be here on set praying, but we want to mobilize the body of Christ because together we are a greater force than individually. So let's join in prayer. You at home, wherever you're watching from, join us. Father, we just beseech your throne yes, and Lord. we ask for your mercy, God, upon your people. Lord, I thank you that we are all considered your people, Jews and Greeks, Father God. And I ask for you to reveal your heart, Father God, to Hamas even. God, reveal your heart, yes. Lord. I pray that they would have experiences that they would not be able to deny that Jesus Christ is the true Son of God. Lord, I pray for Israelis that don't yet know that the Messiah has come, that their eyes will be open. God, I pray that you will just move mightily, Lord, around our world. Father, we have heard it prophetically said that as things are happening in Israel, so are things happening around the world. And God, we are looking to you, Father. I thank you that fear is bound, God, from us, that you would deliver us and that your enemies would scatter. Lord, I thank you that you help us that are living in the comfort of America or other countries around the world that our hearts won't be cold toward what's happening in Israel. But Father, awaken us. Awaken us, Father, to the things that are happening. And Father, we pray, number one, for your kingdom to come yes. and your will to be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like that, I invite you to uh, continue to pray. You can also call our prayer partners. You can pray for Israel that way. You can also pray for any needs you have in your family, Sid. Yeah, and you know, as we've been just talking about what the war is going on in Israel, just want to encourage you that I know what we're seeing in the natural, there's so much going on in the spiritual. And we know that God is a God of war, that he is Adonai Savayot, that he is the Lord of the angel 
armies. And so we just want to encourage you and comfort you. Even I know some people, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty, but know that God, he is with us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. So no matter what's happening in the earth, whatever is going on, it is time for us to arise and shine for our light has come. Because even though there's gruesome darkness over the earth, we know that God is calling us as us, as the ecclesia, as the body of Christ to be the light in the midst of darkness. But you know, oftentimes we go through our own periods of darkness and it can be hard, it can be troublesome, it can be worrisome. And that's why we're so grateful for our guest today. Michelle McKenney Hammond is an award-winning, an Emmy Award, excuse me, winner, global entrepreneur and best-selling author of more than 40 books. Known as the queen of reinvention and empowerment, McKenney Hammond has helped thousands of people who've been blindsided with loss flourish during unexpected change. Her latest book, When Shift Happens, Say Yes to your next. She shares personal experiences of upheaval in order to empower others. Michelle, it is so, it's such an honor to have you with us today. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. So Miss Michelle, just want to ask you, you know, you, for decades you have been inspiring people with your books and just pouring wisdom and advice. What prompted you in your spirit to create When Shift Happens? Well, shift happened. <laughs> I mean, the world shut down, lots of things took place, but actually I, I waited for two years afterwards to write the book and really felt compelled by the spirit of the Lord that even though the pandemic seemed to be over, that people were still reeling from the changes and the aftermath of it. Uh, you know, that there was a place where some people got stuck, some people were energized and some people were paralyzed by the changes that took place. We do business differently. We do education differently. Uh, we've even shifted in the way we approach relationships. So I felt that it was time to address these issues and let people know that there's hope on the other side of that change. You know, even just, I know like COVID-19, it seems like it was so long ago, but we are still dealing with the aftershocks in our whole world. Like you said, it has shifted, it has changed. And one thing I like that you bring up and you brought up when you were writing is this whole idea of divine discomfort. Can you define what it is and what it looks like when we're in it? Well, you know, sometimes I think that we think it's our own discontent, but it's actually God ruffling our feathers and saying, there's more. There's more beyond where you're sitting. You know, I've had this repetitive dream over the years that I lived in this house and I'm walking around one day and I notice a door I never noticed before. And I open the door and I walk into it and it's an entire wing of the house I never knew was there. Beautifully furnished with fabulous rooms. And I start saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. I could have been doing this. I could have been doing that. I could have served people this way and that way. And I know that it's God's nudge to me that, hey, Michelle, there's more deposited in you than what you're using. It's time now to stretch beyond where you've been and step into your next. So I believe that that happens for every person. That little nagging thing that says, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to my career, my relationships, uh, whatever it is I'm doing that uh, God is calling you beyond that safe place into an exciting place. But sometimes that's scary. Mm -hmm. It can be very scary, like to jump out of, like on water and walk by faith. And Miss Michelle, can you just share from your own personal life experiences where you felt like, you know, what God was kind of moving the nest and it's like, OK, daughter, it's time for you to go. Well, you know, I've, I've been through a lot of changes in my own life. I've had the death of a boyfriend, which led me to Christ. Um, I got hit by a car and, and was in bed for a year and a half recovering, which made me write my first book. Um, I've gone through devastating financial loss um, based on, you know, just bad things happening in my office, which ended up um, paving the way for me to move to Ghana because I had to sit and look at my options of, where was I and what was happening? A lot happened in that short period of time. Uh, office lost, home um, get before closed. My dad died, like all within, it was like a Job experience. And I remember my accountant walking up to me and saying, look, your dad left stuff to you. Why don't you just go sit there and take the time to find out what God wants to do with the next phase of your life? And that's exactly what I did. And it's been an exciting ride ever since, I'll tell you. It's just amazing, like even in those roughest and those hardest times, how God is just like, okay, even though it's rough and tough, I have a plan and purpose for you. And one thing I really love that you write a lot about is you reference the book of Job. So for you, Miss Michelle, how had the book of Job really inspired you and encouraged you to move forward into your yes? 
Well, he got double for his trouble, didn't he? I mean, he lost everything, and his friends were saying, you did this wrong and that wrong, and he hadn't done anything wrong. God actually trusted him with the test and rewarded him, uh, you know, in great measure after he came through. I forgot to mention that I got fired and rehired to the same job twice. And you know what was so interesting was that second time when they let me go, um, my boss said to me, we have to do cutbacks. And I really measured who I should let go. And I decided you were the most likely to succeed because I know that you have a lot of dreams that you haven't pursued because you're comfortable here. So consider me the mother eagle kicking you out of the nest. Well, after that, I went on to produce and direct two um, uh, infomercials for them and won two Philos that year, first and second place. I would never have known that I had the ability to write and produce and direct if I had been sitting in the same spot. So there's this place where God takes us, um, where we discover the more that he's placed in us when we uh, when we embrace the change. If we sit down and par be paralyzed, and, and we're like that man at the pool of Bethesda who just, just sat there for 38 years, we won't discover we can walk. But when Jesus comes along and causes discomfort and says, get up and hey, by the way, take up your mat, take up those excuses you've been lying on for the last 38 years mm -hmm. and walk. We discover that we're stronger than we know. Amen. I love that story you shared about like your job was just like, OK, we got to push you out. Your boss said that so you yeah. could walk and be all that you're called to be. And can you just speak to that person who's watching right now? They are right in that place. They're like, you know what? I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. Can you speak to them about how important it is to change the mind? The mindset is everything. You know, um, you can say, I have to do something, or you can say, I get to do something. When you say, I have to do something, you put yourself in jail because all you're thinking about is the imprisonment factor. But when you say, I get to do something, the world opens up options to you. You're free to pick another lane to drive down. So it's really important to not feel that God is imposing you into a bondage situation and that he's actually pushing you into freedom and liberation to discover more than you imagined. Remember the word says, eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, it hasn't even entered our imagination, the things that God has prepared for us, not just in eternity, but right here on earth when we're open to the change and say, okay, God, I'm not going to ask you why this is happening. I'm going to ask you what you want to show me, how you're going to show up and glorify yourself and what you want me to do in this instance, and then follow his finger where he points. I love that. And you know, one thing in I, one of the quotes that you said that really stuck out to me is create consistency in your habits to break up the status quo in your life. I've heard a pastor one time say like discipline determines your destiny. Can you speak into that for a moment? Because a lot of us, it's like we want things to change and shift, but I love how you're talking about the consistency aspect is important. Yes, you have to keep at it. I mean, it took years for Noah to build that ark, you know. Um, he could have said at any point, this doesn't look like it's working, and stopped, and he would have been caught in the flood. But the day came when opportunity um, met his preparation, and he had success. And that's what we have to really know that we have to employ. Sometimes I think we get into a place and space where we over-spiritualize the things we're going through, and we don't take the actions that are necessary. Faith without works is dead. And prayer is where we check in with God to receive instructions on the way forward. So it's very important to employ those two things together to get the instruction and then remain consistent. You know, it's very important to not just know what God said, but what God is saying. There's a big difference. God, what he said is the big picture. Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. But well, what was he saying? He was saying on a daily basis, move, go here, go there, go there. Okay, now it's time to, to pray for those people who can't have children. I mean, there were instructions along the way. And then he came back at that moment when it was time for that plan to be implemented to say, okay, this time next year, you're going to have a child. So there's what he said, and then there's what he is saying. So we've got to stay plugged in, mm -hmm. getting those daily instructions and consistently following through. Oh, you just hit something so powerful. There's what God said and what God is saying. So how if that person right now is like, okay, I have, because I know a lot of times we've received these prophetic words that God said this, but listening to those day to day, what he's saying, how do you cultivate that in your life? I think a lot of people, you know, they want that, but they don't know how to go about cultivating those moments. 
Well, that's that building of intimacy on a daily basis with God. You know, taking the time for devotions, taking the time to check in and say, what's on your heart, God? What's on your mind? You know, prayer is not just about giving him a list of things to do for you. It's about finding out what's on his heart for you, uh, what his directions are for you on a daily basis. And as you cultivate that daily, his voice will become sharper and sharper in your spirit. You know, the word says you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. So cultivate the interest but also cultivate taking the time to hear what God is saying. He's going to speak to you in different ways. He's going to speak to you through the word. You're going to be reading the word and something's just going to leap off the page and you're going to know that's for you. He's going to send people into your life to instruct you. And he's also going to allow circumstances at times to direct you. So you've got to be sensitive to all the ways that God speaks. Mm -hmm. Michelle, I kind of want to stay on this theme because sometimes people have gotten a vision of something, but it's, it seems like a far off, like a, a light way out there somewhere, and they just don't seem like they're getting there. What do you, what do you say to that person that has this vision? And it's from God. And it's something they know that God wants them to do, but they just don't seem like they're getting there. Well, they've got to trust the process of God. Nothing great happened overnight in the word. Let's face it. I mean, how many years was Joseph in Egypt as a slave in jail before he had that dream come true? Now, initially when he had the dream, he thought it was about him and his brothers liking him, but it was a bigger dream. See, the visions and dreams we have are usually bigger than what we conceptualize them to be. And those things take a longer time because it's not just about you. It's about kingdom business and God's kingdom design and how it all fits into everything else that he's doing. And so you that's where the consistency that Sydney addressed comes in. You've got to stay at it. And that is where our trust gets tried, isn't it? When we're uh, saying, whoa, wait a minute. I think before the show started, I was talking about how I've been studying the two storms that the disciples went through with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, in both cases, he said, go to the other side. There was a vision of reaching another place, but there was upheaval in the middle of it. And it seemed that God wasn't even interested. In one instance, he was asleep. In the other instance, he was sitting up in a mountain watching them as the waves were bad and finally decided to walk down and and give them some hope. But the bottom line is they got to the other side and he was present. He did know what was going on and he allowed them to be tested and strengthened and for their faith to grow and for them to get another revelation of who he was in the middle of the upheaval that got them to the other side. So you've got to just keep pushing and you've got to keep trusting and staying on your face and and getting those daily instructions. And when you hear nothing, know that there's still a lot going on beneath the surface. I talk about seasons in the book and and winter, you know, and it looks like nothing's going on in winter, but there's a whole lot going on in winter. And that becomes evident in spring when it seems like overnight flowers appear. So powerful. I think you're dropping so many wisdom nuggets. And I just love what we were talking about, you know, when Jesus is saying like, cast your nets the other side or getting to the other side of the storm, that it's so important to keep our eyes centered and stayed on Jesus. And a lot of times I think, you know, Miss Michelle, we will be like, oh my gosh, the enemy's doing it. And it's actually God being like, no, I am exactly. causing this storm. Keep your eyes on me. And I love this quote that you have in your book that really um, touched my spirit. It says, when life blindsides you with loss, you must renew your vision and decide to begin again. Review your options for starting over and choose your path. A lot of times, would you say that, you know, when God is shaking us, when he's shifting us, that it, there's a lot of loss that can happen in those winter seasons, but it's all mm-hmm. for his purpose and plan to get us where we're called to go. Most definitely. He's just clearing a path for something better. You know, um, hoarders, you can't get in the house. You can't bring anything new in, right? So you got to clean out the excess. I have a practice where every year I clean out my closet. And I would say, why don't the clothes go down? But I realized I made room for new ones. <laughs> the same way. I'm exactly the same way. I just did that today. So we're on the same page. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so the, God is always making room for more. And we're clinging to the old because we're, we're, we're really spiritual hoard, hoarders. You know, mm-hmm. we like things that we know. So we cling to the familiar, not knowing that, you know, on the title of the book, we we deliberately did the if in the middle of the shift to italicize because there is a big if 
-hmm. in the middle of shift. There's that element of the unknown that's scary that causes us to cling to what we know. Um, but that's where we also lose out on new adventures and new opportunities that are even greater than the ones we've experienced. Michelle, just talking about that, you know, the if between the shift, I think, I feel like a lot of people are right there. It's scary, the unknown, trusting in God in ways you've never trusted him before. Can you just take a moment and just to pray for that person that's watching that is literally like, here I am, and I don't know which way I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go. You can take a moment and pray for them. Yes, Heavenly Father, I lift up those that are in the middle of uh, feeling anxious and fearful of their future. And just remind them this morning by your spirit that you hold their future in your hands. And as the message Bible says in the Jeremiah 29, 11, you know what you're doing. You've got it all planned out and it's for good, not to abandon us, but to give us the future that we hope for. Let them rest in that promise from you this morning, because when we have nothing else to show physically, we do have your promise and you are true to your word. You're not a man that you should lie. And so I ask, Father, that their hope would be renewed and revived as they choose to be still and know that you are God in Jesus name. Amen. And if that's you, just be sure to call our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Miss Michelle, it was such an honor just to have this conversation. And I believe that you've sowed so many seeds of wisdom into people that they know it is time for them to shift. <clears throat> Excuse me. Her book is called When Shift Happens, Say Yes to Your Next. Thank you so much for joining us today, Miss Michelle. Well, we are just so grateful that you have been with us and we just pray that your spirit has been stirred and knowing that God has so much in store for you. And we come back, you always know we love to speak directly into your spirit and your heart. And Amanda has something very special she wants to share with you. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Television exists because of the faithful support of our partners. Thanks to you, we get to proclaim the good news of Jesus, both locally and around the world. All this month, as our way of saying thanks, we are offering this beautiful and inspirational 16-month calendar for your best gift to CTVN. This special Israel calendar, 75th anniversary edition, celebrates 75 years of modern Israel as a nation. Each month, you'll enjoy a new and beautiful feature of the Holy Land. You'll be blessed to see places in the Bible come alive. This 16-month calendar runs from September 2023 to December 2024 and has plenty of space for writing your daily activities. Request the special Israel calendar, 75th anniversary edition, as our thank you gift when you give to CTVN today. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Hope happens here. What a wonderful interview and just the con. I have so many nuggets I wrote down. I don't know if y'all had your paper and pen, but I was going. But, you know, she said choosing to follow him daily is a big part or said you said choosing the path was one of her quotes you know which way and so this talk about choice it was just this morning that I was reading from Deuteronomy 30 and it's this choice that we have to choose life and I want to look at verse 20 and it says you can make this choice by loving God obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him this is the key to your life I just think that there is so much content in this interview that we did and in this scripture, but it is asking for you to choose. God gives us the option. And today we want you to know he is desiring for you to choose life. And what does it mean to choose life? Well, he said, you can make this choice by loving God. Would you choose to love God today? You can make this choice by obeying him. When he speaks to you, even in those if moments, it can be scary, but you're obedient. You're going to step out. You're going to talk to that person, or you might go across the street to that neighbor, or whatever that looks like that he's speaking to you. But you are going to commit yourself firmly to him. Salvation isn't a fleeting thing that just happens by chance. It is a choice that we choose to make to believe God, 
to obey him and to firmly commit to him. And today, he would desire nothing more than for you to, to make that commitment. So if you would just ask the Lord, Father, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins, Father. Forgive me of the times where I missed it. And God, make me new. Wash me clean with your word, Lord. And I thank you that I get to become a child of the living God. Lord, we thank you for this moment. And if God moved upon your heart and you spoke that with me, I encourage you to give us a call. Let our prayer partners pray with you. And we would love to get a tool in your hands that will help you grow in your relationship with God. This is a very serious commitment, Sydney, that the Lord desires of each one of us. It surely does. You know, one of the greatest things, I, I just even want to go back to something you said about the key, that Jesus right now, I just really believe he wants to unlock the key in your heart. And when you allow him into your spirit, when you receive him, not only is just your savior, but you just allow him to be Lord of your life and you just lay it all down. I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. Shift will happen in your life. Things will change, falls, the chains will break off of you. And that's what we desire. That's the greatest hope that we have is in Him and Him alone. He is the great I am. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And more than anything, we just want you to know that He loves you with an everlasting love and He paid the ultimate price that you and I could not pay so that we could have life, not just eternal life, but we can have an abundant life here on earth and experience the kingdom of God. So will you shift today and receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and choose to follow Him and lay your life down all for Him today? It is the ultimate shift. It is walking in newness of life, it says in the scriptures. Do you walk in that newness of life? It is, a, it is walking from one direction into another one, walking away from God to walking towards Him, walking, following after Him, being a Christ follower and having your life change forever. It is the ultimate of leaving one, one path and taking another. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So. I hope you prayed with, with Amanda and that you will continue to follow Christ today. Have a great one in Him. On tomorrow's Hope Today, have you ever found yourself searching for meaning and purpose but still feel unsatisfied? Author and Bible teacher Kelly Needham reveals how you can pursue a deeply meaningful life that won't leave you feeling stuck or disappointed. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.